is Sensei Swole checking in for the latest video on the channel. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, about a week or a week and a half ago, I put up a Q&A pop-up for you guys to send through some questions, which I'm gonna answer in a video response here today. I'll be having them pop up on the screen as I go through them and give you a response. But yeah, we're gonna kick it off now. We're gonna go through all 10 questions, and then I'd appreciate if you guys can uh, let me know if I've answered those well enough, or if you want me to dive into a question a bit more in the comment section below. But let's get into the first question. This one says, amazing transformation, thank you. Thoughts on bulking, anxiety, and relapsing. Okay, first off, I don't like that term bulking. I just wanted to put that out there. I feel like it's a very odd term because people just immediately associate that with just chucking on a ton of weight. Um, look, you can do that if you're starting at a very low set point of body weight. But if you're doing it in terms of bodybuilding or a way for recomposition of your body, if you're going from a cut to a heavier weight, I think it's always good just to consider that off season or bulking season as an improvement season. Meaning you're trying to put in a certain amount of weight as you go through the months or a year um, of that time frame where you're trying to add on weight and size. But yeah, thoughts on bulking. I currently am starting my off season now. I'm about four weeks in. And I've written up a plan, diet plan and training plan where I'm going for realistic goals. So, you know, finishing my competition three weeks ago at 73 and a half kilos, I'm now at 76 kilos in four weeks, which is quite nice and controlled. And I only aim to put in about 150 to 200 grams of weight per week up until probably the end of 2022. So basically what that is, is aiming for about 0.5% body fat gain in a week per week. So I do think bulking is good though, because a lot of people try and do a main gaining approach, which is basically trying to eat only a tiny bit above maintenance calories and you know, with the goal of putting on uh, mass, lean mass, muscle tissue, while pretty much avoiding any fat gain. A five to six month period of eating in a surplus calories, so sort of gaining weight, followed by maybe a mini cut of six to eight, eight weeks or a proper cut of about three to four months. Because I feel like you can put on more muscle in that time frame versus a prolonged approach over three or four years. And about anxiety and relapsing when bulking, one thing I'd say is you have to accept that when you're gonna be doing this bulking, you're gonna lose those abs, you're gonna lose those striations. Obviously you don't wanna overdo it where you know you kind of just lose all muscle definition. My goal when I'm bulking or putting on weight is to still maintain some sort of muscle shape, definition, and maybe still some visibility of my abs in the midsection. You gotta be okay with that because you're hoping that in the long run, this five, six, seven month, maybe even a year period of putting on weight will actually net you a positive result when you shred it all away and see the finished product that's lying underneath. You know, obviously as long as your training nutrition is on point, but yeah, it is something hard to wrap your mind around, but it's just part of the process and you hope that once you finish this period of putting on weight and you peel it all away, that you'll be happy with the end result, which I'm sure you will be if you're putting in that work. Ooh, okay, this next one's a good one. How many cheat days do you allow yourself a month when cutting? Now, I'm gonna explain this in two ways. One is if I'm doing a competition prep diet or a competition cut, I won't have any cheat days at all. A recent six month competition prep, I didn't even have one day where I had any kind of cheat days. Um, but otherwise, if I'm just cutting in general throughout the year or just to lower my weight um, at a certain time of the year, I might allow myself to have a cheat day every two to three weeks. Yeah, so every two to three weeks, maybe two times in a month if I feel like I've really put in some hard work and am I actually aiding my recovery if I'm just feeling burnt out and just really drained and tired. But yeah, once every three weeks or so, so once a month or maybe twice a month max, especially if I'm on a cut. All right, number three, let's get into it. Can I build muscle and lose fat while being obese? Once again, a very complicated one because it really depends on the individual. Being able to lose fat and build muscle while being obese, if you're just starting out, um, let's say when you're in a period where you've never trained before, never lifted weights, the act of lifting weights and going to the gym and you know, with or without cardio, I think you definitely will for the first six months to a year, put in a good amount of muscle while also losing fat because it's something your body's not used to and it just responds like crazy for the first year or so. Um, it's like what they call newbie gains. So whether you're trying to lose fat or just gain size, your body like hyper responds for that first um, year or so. I honestly do think you can drop a significant amount of fat while putting on muscle. This is something that I was personally able to do when I first started training. I remember in the first year when I was weighing at that 130 kilo or so point, 
um, I managed to drop from the 130 to about 95 kilos in the first year just by going into the gym, training six, seven days a week, um, an hour and a half or so weight training, no cardio, no diet, and I was able to drop that weight while putting on muscle and strength. So yes, I do think it is possible. Okay, question number four. So fear of off-season bulking after being a former heavy person. Another really good one and similar to the second question, um, which can relate to you know anxiety about bulking. So after being a heavy person, yeah, you probably will have some kind of doubts in your head whether you should start gaining weight again. Even if you have dropped a significant amount, gotten shredded, gotten lean, because a lot of us have that paranoia that we might get too big again. I would say have a structure before you set out to do anything like a bulk. You know, have your diet written out, have someone that can keep you accountable like a coach or a PT, um, and make sure that you are keeping yourself accountable as well by doing your weekly weigh-ins. Visual check-ins are really good, so taking photos at least once or twice a week. And yeah, the best thing I would say is if you can afford it, do get a coach who can lay out a diet program for you, which you know takes that burden off your mind and you keeps it a bit easier just following a structured routine. Pretty much try and set up a diet that you can yourself, monitor it, weekly check-ins, weekly photos, and make sure that your weight's going up nice and slow. I would always advise somewhere around 0.25 to 0.5% of your total weight at the moment um, is what you should aim for in terms of an increase per week. Another really good one, question number five. What's your quickest method to cutting fat without losing muscle tone? If you're doing something, if it's over the long term and you don't have a strict deadline to meet, I would just say gradually just lowering your calories and maybe investing some sort of time in a cardio routine, such as a 20 to 30 minute incline walk on a treadmill after your weights, or even just a 30 minute power walk every morning. So that pretty much goes into that calorie net balance where you're gonna be lowering your calories through the cardiovascular exercise and also through the um, diet changes you make. And if you do both, then it's a bit easier because you won't necessarily have to go on such a strict diet if you're also managing your calories from a cardio standpoint. But if it is a time frame much quicker, you can implement something such as a mini cut. Um, now a mini cut is a period where maybe for four to eight weeks, you're significantly lowering your calories. I'd say possibly by up to about a thousand but this is only if you're in a situation where you've been eating above your calorie maintenance, so to bulk. So let's say I'm eating 3,000 calories, I might drop it down to 2,000 calories or so for about six weeks, um, mainly taking away the calories from carbohydrate sources and a bit from fats. Um, and then yeah, so the reason why this can still work and help you maintain muscle tone is because it's an aggressive fat loss phase, but only for four to six or maybe even eight weeks, the chance of losing a significant amount of muscle by doing this is just lowered because of that time frame. Whereas if you were to do something like that and carry it over about eight months, the amount of muscle mass you will lose is significant. So the kind of two ways, so the mini cut way, which is about, I'd say four to six weeks of dropping about, I don't know, 750 to 1000 calories if you're on a bulking standpoint already, or doing a more slower, maybe six month approach of dropping about maybe 20% calories and implementing some sort of cardio. And as I said before, it's always good even in a cutting standpoint to do weekly check-ins and photos and make sure that even your rate of loss on the scale isn't more than about, I'd say, two to 300 grams of weight loss per week. You don't wanna be losing about half a kilo to a kilo because that can also include some muscle loss along the journey if you're going too quick. All right, question number six. What made you turn your life around and what was the light switch moment? All right, so look, I'm gonna be honest. Um, throughout high school, when I was obviously overweight and getting bigger and bigger, approaching 130 kilos at the end of year 12, subconsciously I knew that I had to change and you know turn my life around, but uh, I wasn't doing anything about it. I was honestly just a very lazy mindset back then, and I didn't really want to put in that work. But the the time where I sort of turned my life around and had that light switch moment was when. Surprisingly, I just finished high school. Um, I had three months to a uni. There was a new gym opening up about five minutes away from my house. And I simply just signed up with a couple of mates just as a pastime and a hobby actually. But after the first two weeks, I'd say, of just going in, having a workout, training an hour, an hour and a half, I just fell in love with it. Like something just clicked inside. I can't really explain it, but I just fell in love with training. I started researching it. Like I studied training principles more than I did for my actual university degrees that I've now finished, but yeah, something just clicked. I fell in love with the gym. I don't think I missed a day for the first seven months of gym. And yeah, 
I don't know, I just fell in love with the journey, dropping the weight, seeing the changes, and then a couple of years later when I got to a really, really lean physique I never thought I'd be able to achieve, and then venturing into the bodybuilding world now, it's just insane what you can accomplish. And from a 130 kilo standing point uh, about four years ago, if I were to look forward and see where I am today, I would have never expected to be here. Especially with these bad boys here. As you can see in the background, I've had my um, medals for my last two seasons of competing back here. But yeah, if you showed me that and how I look right now when I first started training about four years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. So yeah, I just got in the gym, did some work, and then something just clicked within me. All right, next one. What are some things you wish you knew earlier into your fitness journey? Okay, so this would be a good one for a lot of the young kids out there. One thing I would say, the most important one, is do not compare yourself to others. Whether that's someone on Instagram, a fitness influencer, or even a mate you're training with, because we're all <coughs> quite different. There's so many factors that play a role. There's genetics, um, training intensity. The intensity you perceive during a workout versus someone else can be completely different. But another thing as well is, when you're comparing yourself to most other people, nowadays it's kind of sad, a lot of people are dishonest to themselves and to others and most of them are taking performance enhancing substances and just don't want to admit it especially a lot of the Instagrammers out there um, that claim natural I can guarantee that 90% of them that do claim natural probably aren't that's why they're screaming it into your ears to every single post they upload um, but yeah so one thing I'd always say is don't compare yourself to others track your own progress and compare yourself by comparing check-ins from now to previous dates and it, as a way to track your own progress in the gym, whether that be you know, putting on weight, losing weight, um, or preparing for a competition. The other thing I'd say um, that you should know earlier into your fitness journey is probably be patient. You don't want to be one of those people that is constantly yo-yoing between bulking and cutting, you know, trying to bulk for about five months and then cut for two months just for summer. Choose a one way of working and stay with it. So if you feel like you really need to put on some size, maybe do an eight months to 12 month period of putting on weight. Even if, you know, let's say you're hitting the beach in summer and you look a bit fluffy or whatever. If you truly want to put in that work and get to your end goal, you got to understand that's part of the journey. And at the same time, if you're trying to drop weight, but you feel like you're getting too skinny or something like that, but you really do want to get extremely lean, which is beneficial for many people's um, either just to feel healthier or maybe in a bodybuilding standpoint like what I did just to assess your physique when it's at its leanness and know where to improve and where to add on muscle. So either way, whichever way you approach it, I think that you should just really be patient, set up a realistic time frame and stop cutting it short just because of what other people think. All right, this next one. How many pull-ups and push-ups can you do? What do you think about calisthenics training? All right, so pull-ups, I'd be honest, I probably can't do a whole lot. Maybe maybe somewhere between eight to 12 reps and push-ups. I think I can get quite a few actually. Like, I remember at some fitness expos uh, doing push-ups competitions to win like a free jug of, like free water jug for gym or something like that. I was able to rep out a good 30 or 40. But yeah, and what about calisthenics training? I think it's good for a lot of people as long as it aligns with your fitness goals. If you're someone that's trying to be a mass monster bodybuilder, it's probably not the best because you can always get injured and that can pull you out of you know, serious hard training for a couple of months, uh, which isn't ideal if you're trying to go in and give it your all every single day. But if you're someone that's trying to say, you know, nice, healthy, active, delve into multiple different sports, and you actually want to stay fit and mobile, I think it's great. And yeah, even for putting on muscle, it is really good. So I'd say that can be something that can get implemented into active rest days. So the days where you're not necessarily in a gym pumping weights, but you know, you might want to go out for a walk or a hike, so even this style of training on those days can be pretty good just to keep yourself fit, active. And yeah, it is definitely always good to be more mobile uh, in the earlier stages of training as well because you don't want to be one of those mass monster, insanely jacked dudes that can't even scratch their own back. So I would advocate for it for sure, especially if you're already doing it right now. All right, we're almost at the end of the video. So this next one, the best way on how obese people can lose weight, e.g. consistency. Well, that's the main point right there, it is consistency. So with losing weight, as I said before, it's at the end of the day, it's calories in versus calories out. There's no other way around it. This can either come from cardio or from a diet perspective, ideally both. So when you're starting out from a set point where you've never dieted or don't really dip into cardio much at all, I would always advocate first to start with a mixed approach. So maybe start going out for 10, 15 minute walks every morning or at night and then 
make some kind of diet adjustments, either with a coach, which I always recommend, or by yourself chucking out some things such as junk foods, um, swapping out things such as full sugar can sodas like Coke into Coke Zero, small changes like that, because I feel like even these small changes of chucking out some junk foods in only 10, 15 minute walks for the first two or three months can make some significant weight loss for people, especially dropping some water weight. Because a lot of us can easily drop, I'd say anywhere between three to five kilos of water weight in a month once we start cleaning up our diet. And then after this, when weight loss starts to plateau a bit and slow down, that's when I'd recommend you know seeking out a dietitian or a coach to give you a structured diet plan. And if you wanna push that even further and you're not weight training, I would recommend getting into the gym smashing out some weights um, but yeah like I said end of the day it's consistency you can't just yo-yo between uh, healthy habits for two months and then go back to your old ways you need to make sure you're staying consistent for months and years or at least for the first six months of approaching any kind of diet or training program um, get someone that can keep you accountable if you don't think that you have that discipline within you all right last one to end the video and it's a very good one to end it it's a, it's a hard one on a scale of one to ten how proud of you is your dear mother? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, well, look, my mum uh, did come to my last series of competitions that I just did in November 2021. And look, throughout the whole competition prep, she genuinely does care. She tries to help me in any way she can. Um, when I'm prepping my meals, I don't let anyone touch them because I don't want... I have my meals pretty much bland, tofu, pan-fried, vegetables, no seasoning. But she would help me out in that regard, whereas let's say if she knew I was running out of steamed veggies in the fridge, she would steam a one kilo bag and just leave it as is. And she, she knows that I wouldn't add any salt or anything to it. So she'd reaffirm me of that. When I'd come home, she'd be like, see the vegetables, they're sitting there, nothing in them. I'm like, oh, thanks mom. So she helped me out in that regard. If something was running low in the fridge, just as my tofu or yogurt, um, which I was using on competition prep, she, she, you know, realized and get it stocked up for me before I even had a chance to go to the supermarket. So that really helps. And at the day of the competition, uh, it, was, it was awesome because it was touching because when I had mum there, um, after my first three divisions on the day where I was competing for about 13 hours, we had gone to the food court to just sit down and have a, have a meal. She started tearing up because um, she just she was telling me how, that, how proud she was of my hard work and that it's not easy and not everyone can do it. And then that's when everything started clicking for her, like what I was doing, how I was you know, spending all these weeks and months of hard work towards this day. And yeah, she teared up and that was really touching and nice to see um, that she really did care. And I feel like that definitely was her showing that she was proud of me at that moment. All right, guys. So that is the end of the Q&A. I really appreciate those of you that sent through the questions. So I chose 10 to answer today. Uh, I hope you do appreciate the responses. Obviously, I can always get more in depth. And if there is a question you want me to dig into a bit deeper, just drop that in the comment section below. And I'd love to get into a more detailed response if needed um, but yeah I plan to do maybe some Q&A videos here and there maybe once a month in between the other video series I've described earlier so I'm going to be putting up the next episode of my squall season series so the check-in physique update and mental check-in probably sometime next week and I might do some videos such as you know what I eat in a day um, healthy breakfast recipes um, diet hacks I'm going to be putting up polls on my Instagram for you guys to decide the videos because I want to make content that you guys actually enjoy, okay? But this was it for today's video. As always, I really appreciate if you can drop a like, drop a comment below, let me know if you watched the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. So this was my second Q&A for the channel. Sensei Swole, check it out.